Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Border Hookups Go RVing. Today we're going to tell you 10 things that you should know to be able to set up your RV campsite successfully. So let's do it. One thing that you want to make sure that you check before you unhook your camper is your power and your water. So make sure those two things work. We use a surge protector so that we can check it before we hook it to the camper. And you want to make sure that all of that stuff is working because if you have to move a site and you haven't checked that, you're rehooking everything up and moving on down the road. Take like this. I just make sure everything's turned off before you plug in. And you go in, turn on your 50. It's thinking, red, red, red. And you'll hear it pop. Wait for it. There it goes, so now we have greens. So what I'm gonna do is we have these hoses. Now this is another thing we've learned. These are great hoses, but they are a pain in the butt when it comes to storing these. So what I'm gonna do on this one, I have a splitter on here, and I'm gonna take this off because I am going to get rid of this after we leave here because it's too crazy. I mean, look at that, it's just nuts. So then what I'm going to do is use this 5G hose. And the reason I love it is it gets small. It's not like trying to put a slinky back in the box. Um, and I'm gonna hook on to this and what I do is um, I always use a splitter because if somebody wants to wash their hands or I want to you know spray something down on the camper I don't have to unhook this unhook from there and redo all that stuff so I will take this 5g hose and I'm gonna get rid of that and but today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this as a secondary hose off the splitter since we already own it and I don't have to uh, worry about getting another hose out. Now another thing I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna add on, um, I'm gonna add on the uh, water filter. The other thing that I have on here is a regulator because every campground is different and you do not know what that water pressure will be like. So I use this part's the regulator, this part's the splitter, and I usually just leave those on the hose um, when I put the hose away and I don't lose it. I don't have to search for it. So pop this on. And this goes on here. One thing I think I will get is I don't like the things where there's pressure or weight on things. So I'm gonna, I've seen online some things that take the pressure. See, I don't like that, the way it puts pressure on there. And it's not a lot, but if I can get a, a little um, piece of hose that kind of has this lay on the ground, I'd feel better about that. One of the biggest conundrums that can happen is that you're not close enough to your power or your water or your sewer hookup. So you want to make sure that you're aware of how long those cables are, how long those hoses are, how long that sewer hose is, because if it doesn't fit or doesn't reach, then you are repositioning that camper. So that's another thing that you wanna check right away. Uh, we carry an extra length of uh, power cable along with us just in case. We carry extra hose and we have several different lengths of sewer hose. Um, so you wanna make sure that all of those things are taken care of before you unhook. When we're backing into a spot, it's really important to know how far your slide is going to come out. So I'm usually the one that's standing back behind and Dave is backing the trailer in. Um, so I'm looking for possible obstructions to the slide coming out, uh, the pedestals, so for electricity and water, uh, boulders, trees, anything like that. And what we've decided to do was to cut a string the length of the slide 
uh, just to make sure because it's hard to know exactly how far that slide goes out by just eyeballing it. So we have something that actually measures. All right. So very low tech solution. We do the same thing for the awning. So we are going to go check and see if the awning has enough room to come out. One other thing to keep in mind is when you're backing your trailer into your spot, make sure you're leaving enough room in front of your trailer for your tow vehicle. Uh, you don't want your nose hanging out into the road. You don't want to be pulling onto grass that you're not supposed to be on in the camping spot. So really use as much space backing up as you can because once you're unhooked, you're adding space because now you're not completely snugged up to your camper. So you want to make sure you allow for that. Here's something that we've run into. When we've backed into a site before, uh, we have backed into where there's a boulder or the curb, and uh, we've backed too far, and then we can't lower our steps. So a tip is to really watch and see where your steps are going to land, and make sure that there are no obstructions. One thing you want to make sure you do is level your trailer side to side because if you don't it can mess up your refrigerator and it can be a tough way to live as you're constantly walking up and downhill in your camper. So what we do is we do it old school. We have this little uh, leveler, bubble leveler, and we put it on the frame of our back window. Um, assuming of course that this frame is true to when they built it. Um, and then we take our Lego blocks again and you kind of know when it's off a few degrees you probably only need um, one level. Uh, if it's way off you probably need two levels. So that's the first thing you want to do uh, once you're where you know you're going to stay um, is make sure you're side to side level. One thing that's really important is that you chalk your tires before you remove your trailer from the truck. We use these, um, we call them the Lego blocks. A lot of people call them the Lego blocks. We use these as kind of the, the first chalk. Um, and then what we do is once these are in place and the truck is moved, then we put in X chocks. Um, and those are kind of the things that really hold in the truck. Um, the reason that we do that is if those tires are up off the ground because of you're having to level, these won't do any good. So you put the X chocks in to make sure that um, everything is stable. You also want to make sure and level your rig from front to back. Um, we have an auto leveling system that has worked really well for us, uh, but we can also level it manually if we have to. And uh, again, you just want to be comfortable in your rig. Uh, our bed, the head of the bed, goes towards the front of our fifth wheel. And so if we do have to err in the side of having one end up a little bit, it would be where the head of our bed is going to be. When everything outside is set up and you come in, you have to make sure that when you're opening all of the cupboards, things aren't falling out. Um, it's a lot like flying in an airplane and things will shift in the cabinets and there might be something that has uh, fallen and as soon as you open that door, it's gonna come flying out. I've had that happen. In fact, I've had it happen in the bathroom where the toilet lid is open and I've opened the cupboard behind the toilet and boom, right into the toilet. So you want to be really careful about opening all of your cupboards after you've landed. So one last thing, when you get to your site and you've plugged in, you want to make absolutely sure that your refrigerator has switched over to electric because you're already paying for the electricity at the campsite that you're staying at if you have power. So you wanna make sure you're not paying for electricity as well as draining your LP tanks. Now here's a bonus tip. One thing that we did was we, instead of running our LP furnace, we purchased a small little, it would be like an office space heater that we set on the counter because our camper's not that big. So there's no sense in us paying for LP when we're already plugged into a park, just like the refrigerator. So we use electricity to heat our camper as well, 
just make sure you keep an eye on it and get one that has an automatic shut off if it flips over and that doesn't have uh, a casing that gets hot around the outside. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of the Border Hookup Scarving and please remember to subscribe and to ding that bell so that we can let you all know when we have new episodes coming out. And if you liked what you saw in this episode, please give us a thumbs up and uh, we appreciate your comments. So comment below if you have anything to say and we will see you all out there. We'll see you out there.